Got it. Ah, we're there, Ken. Okay. Wow, what do you got? That looks complicated. Yeah, um, it actually is. Uh-oh, I said actually. All right. <laughs> ah! <laughs> that, that's a good one. That means we can drink. <laughs> Um, as I w have been showing off uh, for a while here, I've been having fun playing with magnets and then making circuits with magnets and then making circuits that uh, are using coils to sense magnets and things of that nature. And last time, I recall, I showed off this rather complicated probe, which I had produced. Let me see if I can get it into the camera here. This is going to work. Um, yeah which had a coil on it and a bunch of free space um, circuitry and that actually has an amplifier and it goes off to a bunch of circuitry on this um, circuit board and integrators and it's all for the purposes of measuring a magnetic field. So after playing with that and building up these circuits I decided to go and have some fun figuring out how else it's done and one of the ways that it's done these days is instead of all of that stuff which I just showed you it's generally done with little sensors, and here it is in my, holding my thumb. And this is an integrated Hall effect sensor. And this is a device which is specifically there to measure a magnetic field. And it's a little three-terminal device, but actually it has a complicated integrated circuit inside. And two of those terminals, one of them is for power, the other one is for ground. And the third terminal is an analog output signal that gives you a signal that's proportional to the magnetic field that's going through the face of this little tiny chip. I'm going to try to hold it so that you can see it. So, I had a lot of fun because this thing basically is all of that stuff which I showed uh, in my probe and all the circuitry which I built behind it to do an integration. Because one of the problems is that with a coil you can sense a changing magnetic field. But you can't sense a static magnetic field. So if everything is holding still and if the magnetic field strength is not changing, it doesn't generate any signal in a coil. But a Hall effect sensor like this one will give you a signal for the strength of the magnetic field when things are moving or when things are stationary. So all of that integration to try to get the stationary value is not necessary because it's always right there. Well, this provides me with some very um, easy things to do. And one of the first ones I went out for was to come up with a way of driving those brushless motors that would work in all of the situations that George might want for controlling knobs and things of, the, of that nature. Because in the last time I showed how to hook up two motors and put an amplifier in between the two of them, the only thing which, is, um, uh, uh, which detracts from using that in many applications is that once you stop turning the input motor, the output motor is free to do whatever it wants to do if there's some other force that's trying to uh, act on it. So you'd really like something that would keep the output motor in a fixed position based on whatever it is that you dialed in on the input. But you can't do that with just a motor input because it's picking up coils and when everything is sta static, those coils aren't getting any signal. But if you take two of these Hall effect sensors and put them at 90 degrees, around a spherical magnet and then rotate that spherical magnet, you will get quadrature output from the Hall effect sensor that you can amplify, send directly into one of those brushless motors and it will exactly follow how you are rotating that magnet and it will stay there wherever you leave it because the Hall effect sensors are still getting magnetic field strength even when the magnet's not moving. So that's basically what got me started doing this. But then I had an idea for something else, and this is really what this demo is about, is this little thing right here. Let's see if I can get in here. You know, this thing. So I'll try to turn it so that you can see it. What this is, is an electromagnet. There's an electromagnet. And then I have taped one of these Hall effect sensors onto the nose of this, of this thing so it can measure how much magnetic field there is in this electromagnet. Also, I should mention that um, these uh, Hall Effect devices are made by the company Allegro. Their number is 1302, and I picked up uh, 10 of them on eBay for $12. So, you know, I'm spending about $1.20 a sensor, which makes them very attractive for a lot of applications. Anyway, 
So I can measure how much the magnetic field is at that point on this electromagnet. So I'm going to turn on some circuitry, which I've got behind this. And let's see if I can get the camera to see what's in the, me in the meter. I'm going to back up here. Now, this may not work because I had a lot of glare off the meter last time I tried to do this. Okay, so we're getting uh, about 270 millivolts off of that sensor after amplification. And I'm going to bring in a little tiny magnet. So here's this little tiny magnet, little spherical magnet. And if I bring it up close to this thing, it's going to start swinging the voltages because it's going to pick up the magnetic field from this guy. Okay, but what you can't see is that I've got another part of the circuit. So I'll go over and see if we can swing over and see it, which is an op amp and some booster transistors on the op amp. And they are actually taking that signal, which is the magnetic field strength signal, from the sensor, inverting it, and feeding it into the electromagnet. So, so it makes a, a negative feedback total amplification system. But instead of the usual linkage for the uh, a negative feedback amplifier, which is an electrical linkage, I actually have a magnetic field linkage going from the sensor to the electromagnet. And the result of that is that this device will power up that electromagnet in order to neutralize any magnetic field which is brought within the sensing range of the Hall effect sensor. So what I have produced here is, in effect, a magnetic mirror. It produces the mirror image magnetic field of whatever magnet I bring up close to the front of this. And since it is a magnetic mirror image, it's repulsive. And so instead of the usual magnet, which would immediately try to stick on to that metal, I can feel when I get my fingers up here, and just barely feel it, and then I can, now I can actually move the magnet by getting close to it. I can feel the repulsive force from this, and it doesn't matter whether I push the north end or the south end of the magnet towards this electromagnet, because the field will automatically reverse, as we can actually see it on the meter. The numbers are changing. I go over there and let me try to get it. As I rotate this thing around, different numbers of amounts of voltage will be being fed into the coil in order to dynamically maintain a mirror image of whatever this magnetic field is. But if I take the magnetic magnet away, there's no magnetic field there at all. So this is effectively like a force field. <laughs> it's a force field that appears only when a magnetic influence comes along and it opposes that magnetic um, influence. And the reason I got started in this is I was thinking about what I would use if I had a pinball game and I was using magnetic spheres as the pinballs and I wanted to have a bumper, but I wanted to have a non-contact bumper that worked entirely electromagnetically, how could I reflect a pinball that's moving along and I don't know which magnetic pole is uh, coming at the bumper. And so that was the, sort of the origin of why I started doing this. But then I've sort of become fascinated with this idea of a servo feedback circuit that neutralizes the magnetic field. 